Howdy everybody, and welcome to another random one-shot here on the Random Rhapsody Network. I am Matthew R. Dawson, your friendly neighborhood host and GM slash player, and joining me for this special improv-heavy game are Alyssa Egan from the Fab Five campaign and Brady Dawson from the Debauchery Circus campaign. Say hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Now, before we begin, we do have a few announcements to get through. First off, I am happy to announce that Random Rhapsody is now affiliated with Hero Forge. Hero Forge offers fully customized, customizable minis um, with dozens of fantasy species and thousands of parts to choose from. Their easy-to-use design tool lets you build your perfect miniature online using a fully 3D in-depth character creator right from your web browser, which is where we actually built our tokens for this evening's game. Hero Forge also offers custom minis in a variety of materials, including color printing options and downloadable models for 3D printers. They are constantly expanding their catalog um, of customization options and adding new parts every week. Um, and they also like to feature special new species and custom posing um, and change those on a regular basis. You can check them out at HeroForge.com. I'm also pleased to announce that tonight's one-shot is going to serve as a prequel for an upcoming uh, campaign called Sonnet of Blood, a Curse of Strahd campaign. That will be starting up on Wednesdays this April. You can keep up to date on our schedule and everything we're doing by following us on Facebook as Random Rhapsody TV and on Twitter as at Random underscore Rhapsody. And that should do it for the announcements. So join us as we dive into the world of Laropa and continue on with the shenanigans of the Fuckleral twins, Falderal and Fiddle Dee Dee. Okay, we're back. And when we last left off, Fiddle Dee Dee Fuckleral had gotten herself into a bit of a pickle when an icy explosion erupted inside of a conclave research outpost that's hidden in the city of Vesipurin. Falderal and a few other Conclave members who were returning from an expedition joined forces to rescue Didi and secure the outpost, thereby saving the coastal town from its frozen fate. As the city was thawed, after the city was thawed, the twins decided to bid farewell to Vesipurin before the local authorities decided to start making trouble. The Margarden Federation holds no treaties with the Erudite Conclave, after all, and ever since the calamity of 25 years ago, the region has become an even more lawless and dangerous place than before. Falderal had heard about a barondom out west called Coltrest, who is looking for an artificer, which sounded to the twins like a good op opportunity as any to check out. Since the town of Vesipurin was um, is a coastal town, the twins decided to um, jump on a uh, fishing boat and make their way north along the coast instead of, you know, traveling through the gentle wastes. The desert is not a safe place and much more dangerous these days. And, and so a, a, a ship route was much, you know, much, much safer. The, the two of them went ashore near uh, Feywalker's Glen, which at one point was a part of the kingdom of uh, Ravancia, but uh, these days, 
or I'm sorry, the king, kingdom of Hyrulean. But these days, not so much. It's a little confusing. But but anyway, you know, um, the t the twins had a plan. They had to head west, and uh, eventually they'll run into Coltrest. Hopefully, we'll we'll see. But in the meantime, you know, there's plenty of goings on, and at the beginning of of their travels, you know, things went fairly smoothly for the twins. We had plenty of time to joke around, laugh, camp for the day, spend our our evenings under the stars, that sort of thing. But it doesn't take long for these two to get into trouble. We all know that's going to happen at some point. So let's just go ahead and roll and see what kind of trouble the twins are actually going to be into. Uh, Dee Dee, would you like to roll? Sure. What am I rolling? You are going to be rolling a D100. 71. Okay, 71. Let's see what we got here. Of course, it's, I picked the longest freaking possible. <laughs> okay, so it looks like um, we are going through a patch of woods, and all seems well. Go ahead and give me a perception check. Um, let's both do it, since we're both traveling through the woods right now. 17. 17. And, of course, I have to reload roll 20. Beginning, <laughs> of the, beginning of the game, and, of course, I have to reload. This improv's going really well so far, isn't it? <laughs> Keeping you on your toes. Exactly. Why is that rolling to GM, too? That's really weird. Uh, Falderall got a 20, which is uh, probably a good thing, honestly. Because, uh, well, let's see here. Falderall stops at the two of us, and he's like, Dee, look over there. That, that area of, of woods, it's moving, and weird it's a it, it's in a soft and gentle kind of move what the heck is that it's almost like a like a like a snake under sand what do you think, think i'm kind of saying let's go around maybe what do you think yeah i'm thinking that's probably the best idea yeah for a pair of gnomes it probably is a pretty good idea i mean it Neither of us are the biggest people in the world, and there's a lot of dangers. Now, we're, we're tough and hardy, and we've been Conclave members for a little while now, but still, better to play it safe. So I'm specifically here to keep you not dead, so let's stay away from things that could change that. Okay. <laughs> Falderall will, of course, roll his eyes because, you know, he, he doesn't like the idea that his sister is there to protect him, even though we all know it's the case. Do I but, need to remind you of the time that you blew off your own eyebrows? That was in a controlled experiment in a lab mm -hmm. using chemicals. Mm -hmm. That is a freaking weird piece of moving ground. What the fuck? At which point... um. Yeah, because a second later, there's a sudden cracking of woods and a roaring rush of noise as a tree falls just in front of us. We both have to kind of jump back and look around. Uh, Falderall has his gun out, looking around, um, trying to see anything. But even with that 20, all he, he can see is another tree falls right behind us. What do you do, Dee Dee? Uh, I try to get us at least up on top of the log so we're not on the ground. Okay, that's going to be an athletics check for us to try <laughs> to climb up onto that. Oh, Jesus. Or, you know what? You're a monk. I, you can do, um, you can do parkour, acrobatics. Parkour? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. You can do acrobatics. 
Just do a little little flip. Nineteen. Nineteen. That's probably going to be a lot better than um, Falderals. Let's take a look. Yeah, that was a four. So you easily just parkour yourself up, jumping onto a branch, flip over onto the trunk that's already downed. Um, your brother is just trying to reach up, jump, grab onto a branch, and he's trying to pull and pull and pull, and then that backpack of his gets caught on something, pulling him back, and he just drops down to the ground. Ah, oh, God! Faldy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, drop the end of my rope to try and help him. Yeah, okay. Um, go ahead and throw, drop down your rope, which is going to give him some advantage, but this time you're going to actually have to make that athletics check to try to brace yourself and pull him up. Okay. Eleven. Well, an 11 is enough to brace yourself. You kind of have to lean back and hold on to, on real tight as he grabs that rope, tw um, twists it around his arm, and begins going hand over hand up the side of, of that, that log. And as that happens, more trees are falling. And, like, it's starting to get kind of intense. Some of these trees are hundreds of years old, even, and they're all just falling. Okay, does this forest have a bad case of termites or wood rot or what the hell? Oh my god, I have no idea. This definitely doesn't seem natural. No, you, you'd think something that uh, lives around here would want to keep, you know, its cover by keeping the trees up. Yeah, you, you say that and uh, your brother actually has to drop and grab onto the trunk as another tree comes crashing down nearby. It's getting kind of kind of crazy here and like as you're looking around a lot of those trees could easily fall on the two of us so we need to get out of here what we're going to have to do is make three dexterity saving throws to get out okay. all right Three of them. So one, two, not <laughs> one, and three. Well, that should not have been an advantage. Who? Okay. Didi, you are having a hard time. I, I feel like you're trying to help your brother more than protect yourself at oh, this yeah. point. Um, your brother's actually kind of gotten into the swing of things, and he's bouncing a little bit, jumping from branch to uh, trunk to trunk, scurrying down and under things. Um, at one point, a tree does fall towards him, and you actually have to jump in front of him to take up uh, to take the brunt of this, um, you're going to take a total of eleven points of bludgeoning damage. Ow! Um, Dee Dee, crap! And he grabs onto you and kind of pulls you out from underneath that tree. Does that help? The last uh, paragraph. If you're subjected to an effect that allows you to make a dexterity saving throw, all oh, but to take half damage. Never mind. Yeah. This yeah. Doesn't count. Nope, doesn't count. And that's spell. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, but what he is going to do, he's like, there's quite a few of these uh, trunks now kind of zigzagged on top of one another, giving you a little bit of shelter in this moment. He kind of pulled you into a little burrow of them. Mm -hmm. um, Dee Dee, are you okay? How are you looking? That may have cracked a couple ribs. <coughs> Ow. He's going to uh, place a hand on you and cast Cure Wounds. And you are healed for six points. Thank you, thank you. <coughs> Go ahead, as you... 
now that you are at least a little bit healed, some of the some of those uh, ribs are mended um, and, and all that. Go ahead and make a perception check. Twelve. Judging based on where you're at right now, there's still trees falling every so often, but as more and more of them fall and, and like crisscross, there's a little bit more cover for mm -hmm. um, for the two of us to get out. It's going to be a little bit easier now at this point. We're each going to need to make a survival check to kind of get through the right places and find ways that structurally sound that we can get out of this forest. Eight. Sixteen's a lot better. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I'm focus on 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 watching our backs. You get us out of here. Yeah, he he grabs your hand, and with that expert uh, knowledge of the scientist, he's fight looking for those right paths, looking for just those areas where where things are braced up enough that you can duck under or crawl. A couple times you have to get on your belly, and unfortunately, one point the two of you kind of have to go separately, and you end up crawling through a briar patch. Ow! 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 Oof! Good God, Matt! Yeah, you kill me before we even start. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, that was a bit. That was a hard roll right there. I'm not gonna lie. Ah, you are looking pretty damn beat up right now. Um, cut up, banged up, but. You manage to get to the other side of the um, of the woods, and it, as you both kind of stop, you both look back and, and and look. There are no more trees around us. We're at least forty feet away from them, and that's all well and good because like more trees are falling down, and then they just suddenly stop. What is this, attack of the giant moles? I have no idea. You, you, we both kind of look around, and um, we're, we're just watching. You come to realize that not only did all the trees fall inward towards the central point rather than the same direction, but now that everything's kind of quiet, there are no sounds. There are no animals. There's... It's actually kind of, you know, eerily silent. Falder, I'll grab your hand and say, I, I think we should probably go. Let's get out of here. Yeah, definitely. And together, the two of us take off running. We're past the woods at this point. We're on, on a little bit more of a grassy plain. Who wants to take charge and um, guide the path to to the next destination? Do you want to, or you want me to? Uh, what is that going to be? Another survival? Survival or nature, either or. Mm, I'll do a survival. Go for it. Twelve. I'm super helpful. <laughs> no, twelve isn't bad for this. Uh, all all we're doing at this point is kind of aligning ourselves, trying to figure out which way is west. And well, um, the sun is so that means west is. Let me see. Where's our shadow? Okay, there's the shadow. West is that way. Okay, I'm gonna take your word for it. He kind of glances up, and you, you notice he's calculating it himself, just in his head. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Hurrying onward, um, you want to roll the next D100? Oh, God, you do it this time. Okay. <laughs> so if I die, I want it to be your fault. Ah, you want it to be my <laughs> fault, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
the two of us travel for the better part of a couple hours. The the thoughts of the, the trees and whatever happened, whatever the heck that was, are fading a little bit. We continue f to walk for a few hours, like I said, and eventually, um, as the sun is slowly beginning to to set, yeah? Before something attacks us, if all we're do it, doing is walking nice and calm, mm -hmm. can, I, can I roll some hit dice as a short rest? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. We could have <laughs> paused at some point and taken a short rest. All right. Okay, well, better than nothing. All right, we reach whatever this next thing is. Oh, I forgot. To, I did have to take damage for Falderall, too, because I forgot he did fail one of those deck saves. So let me do that real quick and then t do some hit die. Okay, nine. And then go back up seven, yeah. So for all, the two of you pause and and two of us. It's weird talking like this. <laughs> um, the two of us pause and, and take a nice hour's rest after traveling a little bit to just you know make sure that we're far enough away from those trees that nothing comes out and bites us. But then we take our short rest and heal up a little bit, patch up our wounds. Um, Falderall will probably, you know, help wrap wrap your head up a little bit and, and all that. And eventually, we the two of us continue on down the road. The path eventually veers around a strange uh, rock outcropping, and. And as uh, the two of us uh, pass it, why don't we go ahead and make a perception check? Damn perception checks. Where is Eloise when I need her? Right. <laughs> okay, perception. Yeah. 14. Nice. And I got a 15. We both see this at the same time. On a second glance, we realize that that's not a rock. It's a skull the size of a freaking house. It just what on its Lord? side, half half a buried. Yeah. What the heck? How long do you think it's been there? Uh, your brother's gonna walk over and kind of take a look at it, see if he can suss that out. Don't you dare touch it, Faldi! Wait, I'm just looking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, you you see as his hand was like reaching out towards it. I'm just looking. I'm not gonna touch anything. Uh huh. Yeah. How long did it take those broken fingers to heal again? I mean, you, what are you talking about? You've broken more fingers and toes than I ever have. Yeah, well, training is very different than uh, your accidents. My accidents are science. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What are yours? Punching boards? Here, why don't you go ahead and punch this? With his 14, he, he kind of walks around and looks at it, but he puts his hands behind his back to, you know, placate his sister. <laughs> he gets around to the other side and he's like, I have no idea. I'm not sure how old this thing is. I'm not sure what it is, in fact. All right, well, hopefully this isn't a typical creature we'll find out here. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I could go over and touch it. No. We're just no fun at all. Do you want this thing magically coming to life and trying to eat us? I mean, how, how, what's the odds of that actually happening, Dee Dee? What are the odds that the ground in the forest decided that it didn't want trees no more and tried to squish us? Well, based on our previous um, experience, I'd say 100%. Yeah. Yeah, so let's not find out that this is also 100% likely. 
Make a persuasion check. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> can I at least get advantage because it's my brother? You can also make an intimidate intimidation check if you'd prefer. It's all it's the same. The same. <laughs> sure, I, I'll give you advantage. Why not? Thank you. Persuasion. 18! Uh, Falderall is going to roll his eyes and be fine, fine, fine. Whatever. And he relu very reluctantly follows you away from the giant freaking skull. Eventually, the th our you travels... You wouldn't even be yeah. a snack for that thing. Exactly! So why would it even want to eat us? Because it just beca it, it it's dead. Clearly, it needs sustenance of some sort. Or maybe it's just dead, and somebody put it there as a cool landmark. You never know. There could have been treasure hidden in there. Who in the world is going to put something that big? Move something that big? I mean, I could probably do it with uh, a bunch of wood, some rope, a, a few. A few uh, wheels, and he starts rattling off like an, uh, basically how to build a crane and how to tr to move things. And he, he he goes on about this for great detail how he could very easily move that skull if he really wanted to. You've heard all this before. Mm -hmm. Anywho, eventually it does get towards the evening time. We're gonna have to get some rest, and we do have quite a, a, a long walk ahead of us. But I'm going to go ahead and show you where exactly we are on the map. Or at least I'll show you the map. <laughs> there it is. Now, if you look at it, um, Vesipurin is down there on the lower right side. Mm -hmm. um, up to the north uh, east of that is uh, Fay Walker's Glen. That's where we came, that's where we landed. And we're probably somewhere around the hills to the north there. If we follow the, the road, eventually we're going to come to uh, Ravancia Keep. And from there, that like, that's the nearest major city. Anything beyond that is more to the west. All right. So probably, judging based on the map that your brother snatched from the conclave before the, you both left, you, you've got at least a week's travel to the keep. Do they then, know you have this? I mean, nobody stopped me. <laughs> I mean, how could Great. they? The, the, the place was frozen. There was this weird dude wanting to play hockey the entire time. So if I, you know grabbed a thing here or there. It's just for research. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what they're there for, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, does your uh, your little uh, wrist booklet notate that you have this, uh, this Um. Oh, oh, I'm sure I'll get to my notes eventually. Mm. Yeah. Right. I mean, of course. You don't have to write down all your notes all the time right away. You, you can you can get to that later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and absolutely no uh, no details will be lost in the uh, in the interim. I mean, no interesting details, no important details. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you say as you both are just kind of walking down the road. I mean, let, let's be honest, Dee Dee. Why did we join the Conclave in the first place? I don't know. I just followed you to make sure that you didn't lose any any more of like. Look, if you were if you were able to bl blow stuff up as much as you were able to at home, imagine what you could do with more access to bigger and more boomier things. Well, yeah, that's kind of the point. Uh-huh. 
with with the knowledge I was able to gather from their archives, I was able to build this. And he pulls out the revolver that, that he built, which he's actually very proud of. No, yeah, that thing is terrifying. The boomstick of death? Come on now. Oh, what the heck? My entire computer just went pixelated. <laughs> well, at least you don't sound like a robot. I do. Like, you sound like a robot to me. I'm not sure. Oh, you don't sound like a robot to me, so. Huh. No, like, everything did. The the audio and... Shoot. Okay, hang on. I'll check Twitch to see if it's okay. Um, okay, as far as I can see, your image is fine. And the audio is coming in through fine, so. So I think it's just your computer. Yeah, I think so. It seems to be okay. Yeah. Give me another sound check. One, two, three. Yeah, it's still doing that. What the heck? That is so weird. Well, I mean, if it's not doing it out there on in the real world, that's all that matters, I suppose. No, at least from what the stream that I have open right now, everything seems to be coming through clear. Okay. Yeah, must be having just a weird glitch on my computer. I don't know. Anyway, well, we'll just keep going and we'll ride this. Uh, or we'll ride this until the wheels fall off. <laughs> but. <laughs> Anyway, um, a as the two of you bicker back and, back and forth about the, the gun and, and whatnot, and uh, things that Falderal may or may not have stolen while in the Conclave uh, place in, you, you know, Vesipurin, it does become, become dark eventually, and we do need to find a, a place to stay the night. Now... We are on uh, a bit of a road, um, not much of one, but a bit of one, a, a bit of an older dirt road that s you can f pretty well tell hasn't seen a whole lot of use. You could, we could choose to stay there, we could choose to get off the road and find um, a likely place. Um, what do you want to do? All right, well, if we stay near the road... Possible bandits and whatnots. If we go off the road, who knows what the hell could happen, but less chance of someone coming by and possibly helping us. So which is really the greater risk? Well, that is an excellent question, Dee Dee. Um... Go ahead and give me a perception check, or a survival check, and we're going to see what we can find nearby. Seventeen. Okay, so with a seventeen, you're, you're kind of glancing around. There is a small uh, outcropping of rock in, in the hills. Probably, you can see them maybe about a quarter of a mile to the north of you. That might provide a bit of shelter. To the south, there is a, a small uh, uh, copse of trees, um, mostly ash and, and beech and, and things like that. It, we could possibly find some uh, soft bedding down there. We, we, we both have packs and, and stuff like that as well. We're so, staying I mean, away from trees. Yeah, you're, you, you have a very good point there. Well, um, rocky outcropping then, I suppose. Okie dokes. The two of us make our way to, to just like he said, the rocky outcropping, which is just a small um, indentation into the hill. Um, it, you can tell by looking around, this place has been used by travelers before for, for rest. So probably a good place to go. There's a little uh, stone circle um, of what's obviously an old fire pit that has been stamped out and long ago hasn't been used in quite a while from what we can tell. And so Falderall gets out his tools, goes about making a small fire. 
Um, he even sets up a little bit of a blind so that um, that the light won't be directly visible from the road. Perfect. As you're all as meals are made and uh, bedrolls put out and uh, the the space. What's the word I'm looking for? The space uh, made a little more li livable. <laughs> Falderall um, kind of glances over at you and says, I mean, you got at least something out of working for the Conclave for the time, didn't you? Yeah, I got to keep my egghead brother from blowing himself up. I mean, more than that. I mean, we we got money, we got a place to live, we got access to, to books and things, and there, there's plenty of, of martial artists in, in the Conclave. I, I feel like half of them do that shit. So, I mean, there's plenty of people to be around, mm -hmm. right? That's true. I don't know. I just worry that you're just coming along with me to keep me keep me from dying, but you're bored the entire time. <laughs> I'm bored a lot of the time, but what would I do without you? <coughs> he kind of gives you an odd. I suppose so. Besides, what would Uncle Lohim say if we weren't together? I throw, as he's saying that, I throw um, a piece of, like, whatever we have in our rations, hardtack or bread, stale bread or whatever, at his head. <laughs> uh, he actually reaches up and manages to catch it with his... Uh, his one finger, uh, hand that's missing a finger mm -hmm. throws it back at you. Oh, come on. Uncle, Uncle Lohim wasn't that bad. He's a... Uh, he was a genius. It's definitely interesting. <laughs> I mean, come on. Re remember the time... That he made that um, that bouncy swing for us to play on with the tire, but when we actually got on it, it would like hover with magic and then start flinging about back and forth. That was like the most fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Remember breaking my arm on that thing? I mean, yeah, but you were the one who was trying to do a backward somersault off of it. Well, yeah. If, you're gonna, if it's going to be doing some crazy shit anyways, might as well just do more crazy shit. I mean, you, you stuck the landing, but that shelf that came, came down on top of you afterwards was just... Yeah. Yeah. Good, good at the gadgets. Not so, uh... Not so good at the uh, architecture. No, that's true. He couldn't build a shelf to save his life. Which, I mean, that's crazy considering the tiny, tiny, meticulous things he's able to build. Mm-hmm. I would love to know what he actually th would think about this thing here that I've made. And he takes out his gun and he's kind of playing around with it and fiddling with it at this point. Are you, Now, are you sure that thing's not going to like go off in your pocket? I mean, I don't have it loaded right now. I mean, he kind of shows you the, the chamber wheel, and it, it is empty. All right. But, but yeah, it, it's, it's totally fine. I mean, I mean, look here. You, you got the, the hammer here. It's connected to, to the, the gear wheel. And um, as long as it's in this locked position right here, it's not going to move it, do anything. Okay. But I also always make sure I don't put one in the in the chamber in the in that one. So you, even if it does accidentally move or anything like that, it's not going to hit anything. I learned my lesson after getting shot 
that one time that I shot myself in the foot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it was a good idea. Yeah. I actually made the thing with uh, one extra chamber on my second uh, run through just to, just so I would have that extra space and still had a good amount of shots. It's not too clunky. I mean, it, it could be worse. I definitely want to build a, another version, but I mean, he, he kind of gestures around the the whole area. What am I going to do? I, I, I can't set up shop here. <laughs> you so definitely we'll see wouldn't have very many customers out here. No, not at all. Who, who's who's gonna who's gonna buy for me? The woodchucks? No, no, they they can't hold a gun. But I mean, once we get down to cold trust, chances are we'll just show them a few of my inventions, and they'll give us a nice cushy place, a shop or something, and we'll be able to build what whatever. Hey, whatever makes you happy. I think it'll be fun anyway. Go ahead and roll for me a D100. Oh, God. Fourteen. What do I have to roll for Brandy to come walking down the road? Oh, that, we're getting there. Okay. We're getting there. <laughs> Go ahead and make a perception check. Brandy's going to be the BBG. I know it. <laughs> Six. I'm tired. You are definitely tired. And it's, uh, it, it's, it, it's getting late. It's been a long day. Your brother's probably grating on your nerves a little bit. No, no, it's fine. Tell me. <laughs> tell me how... Um, you know that doodad mechanism works. <laughs> mm hmm Yeah, um not not really having being very good at social cues. He's gonna go ahead and do just that. Start talking about uh well his gadgets and his gizmo and, and how how exactly the the gun works and the compo combustion involved and all that and you very soon drift off to sleep. You're awakened, you're not entirely sure when, by your brother shaking your shoulder re really, really violently and going, Shh! What the fuck? I saw movement out there. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Where? He points in, uh, a little ways to the south. I don't see anything. What are you pointing at? He, he kind of sighs, and this time he pulls his rifle out from from his pack and um, extends this little looking glass mechanism that he's built onto it. And he, he's, he puts it up on the blind and says, look through there. Go ahead and make another perception check. Fourteen. With a fourteen, you can see in the, the light of the moon... The, there are five distinct shapes. Humanoid, you're fairly sure. Bipedal at the very least. And they seem to be moving towards your campsite. Shit. I'm going to turn around and put out the fire. You grab up some... Uh, what were you going to use? Water or dirt? Dirt. Okay. I'm not going to put the smoke signal out. <laughs> I mean, not everybody thinks about that. I was just curious. Um, but yeah, you, you start shoveling some dirt onto the, the campfire to smolder it. You can already see your brother is um, winding up his, um, his bedroll and uh, fixing his backpack on once again. He, he says to you, What do you think? Keep quiet, hide, or get someplace else? How far off did they look? They looked more, no more than maybe 100, 150 or so feet. No, I'd say farther than that, because we were a half a mile out from the road. Yeah. So, um, 
with, with the telescope, you, 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 you estimate probably it'll take them about a, a good five, six minutes to get to you. Okay. Um. <coughs> Dude. And how far off um, is any other kind of cover? Well, we are currently in kind of a hilly region right now, just at the edge of it. Mm-hmm. So there's there's plenty of hills behind us to the north. To the south of us is, is, is relatively open ground. All right, let's uh, let's see if we can hide behind the crest of another hill just in case they're coming for this uh, this camping spot. Okay, sounds good. Let, let's get going. Um, your brother grabs his ba- his bag, he gets it all situated. He has his gun out, but and but he's uh going to keep it, you know, uncocked for now. T- we are going to have to do a skill challenge now. Okay. Okay. First is going to be a stealth check. Followed by a um, survival check. Followed by, um, yeah, probably a perception check. This is us sneaking, us trying to make our way around the the hillside and 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 find uh, and keep our footing. And then the last is um, to keep an eye out to see whether or not they're following. Okay, so stealth. Survival and then self survival and perception. Perception, okay. Stealth, okay. Survival and perception. Hey, 18, 18, and 22. Nice. Yeah, you're doing a lot better than your brother is. He's acing the stealth. The two of you are small and quiet, and you've been teaching him a little bit as time goes on. So both of you are stealthy as hell. He having is having much harder time keeping his footing as you start making your way around the hill, which is costing you both some time. Mm-hmm. You do make it to the top of the hill, and you crouch down, the both of us. Your brother's looking around. He's got his his rifle out at this point, but he can't see much. You, on the other hand, through the light of the moon and your well-trained um, eyes, you can see those five individuals, but it seems that they have something else with them, something large and quadrupedal, at least medium size, walking in front of them, kind of its head down, it's got a long tail. It's hard to make out what it is in the darkness. You're pretty sure not a dog. Not a dog. Not is a it dog. Too big or too small to be a horse. Too small to be a horse and okay. wider, squatter. The legs kind are kind of like the elbows are up as it walks. You can see a, a long tail that's kind of thick to one end and thin towards the other. And its body seems kind of bulky on on the shoulders, but it you can't like you you, you there, it's really hard to tell. You 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 have the dark vision, you have the moon out, so there is a little bit of light there, but it's really hard to get any good distinct features on it from from the distance. But with that twenty two, you can also tell that whatever it is that's walking in front of them, it it's got its head down, it's sniffing around. You're pretty good. You're, you're you've got a pretty good guess that it's sniffing you out. Us? Why us? It's always oh, they, us. Yeah, but why are we being followed? And who by? I have no idea. No one would even know we're out here. <sighs> With. Keep riding on that 22 as you kind of look around and look, because you're on a kind of a high hill. Mm -hmm. You can see that there is a a valley between several hills um, somewhere to uh, to the north of you that it almost looks like, like like it's hard to make out in the darkness, but Mm -hmm. you think you can see a structure down there, possibly a, a house or a farm maybe. Do 
We risk it. It's a lot better than hanging out around here. All right, let's go. Okay. We're going to do another stealth check okay. and another survival check. Oh boy. I love that we keep do doing these shitty rolls, but they're the ones that make sense narratively. Uh, ugh. 18 on stealth, but not one on survival. Yeah, as you start making your way down the side of the hill, you lose your footing and just start sliding down on, on what's relatively loose rock. Have I got slow fall at this point? I do. Yeah, so like it, you're, it's a hill, so like you're yeah. you're not falling down, you're sliding. You're able to slow yourself and and uh, stop fairly quickly when this happens. You're not going to take any damage, but the dust that comes up from it and the noise that's not something you, you like. Shit. Screw stealth. Run. Mm. I didn't say scream, I said no, run. I know. <laughs> he just takes off running. He's following your lead. You saw where the farm was. He didn't, so he he's following you. So I want you to go ahead and make another perception check. Oh, boy. Twelve. It's difficult to see because it is late at night. There is a bit of light from the moon, but for a moment... You're not sure whether or not you're following the right path. You keep running and running and running, getting around one hill, then suddenly you stop there in the distance. That's definitely a building of some sort. You can see two of them, one larger than the other. Um, there's a, a bit of a big old spindly looking dead tree in front of it. Um, no lights whatsoever. Just go, go, go. We'll, we'll see if we can find cover. And we are going to keep running. Your brother grabs your hand, and as quickly as the two of us can, we run, making our way towards that, uh, that house. The closer we get, we can realize it is, in fact, a house. You can see four walls. You can see uh, a bit of a roof. It, it's kind of a, a weird sort of angle, kind of like a, an L-shaped house a little bit. And behind it, um, far to the west, you can see a small building over there as well. Possibly a barn? It's got a fence around it. You take off at a run, heading in that direction. And with your 12th perception, you, you're not sure whether or not anybody's following or, a lot, or not, but you did definitely make quite a bit of noise. As you continue to run, you get closer and closer to that building. You can see that near the tree, there's a pretty big old hole right in the center of, of the, um, the, the pathway to it along with a couple other big dirt mounds. And Falderall is just running as fast as he can towards it. He's like, look over there, we can hide and, and, and check it out. He goes running and just jumps right on in. Faldy, those are graves. Ah! You hear the sound of a thud, kind of wet and not... Like, not wet exactly, but, you know, not hitting solid ground. As he does, Brandy, your character has been lying on his back. The first thing he can see is stars. It's kind of nice. It's a clear night sky. Very dark. And then suddenly, a bit, some 90 some odd pound lump just comes diving onto your lap with a thud. 
The wind is knocked out of you for half a second. What do you do? Ugh. What the? What? Oh my god! There's somebody in here! There's somebody in here! Shh! Shut up! Shut up! Now run up. You run up and you glance down there and with your dark vision you can actually say you can, you can see that there is a looks like a human man laying on the ground in the hole with your brother sitting right on top of his chest looking at him with a gun pointed right down at him Is he alive? Are you alive? Oh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not dead, dead yet. yet. The fuck are you doing in a grave? Look, there are people coming. They've got a big thing. Mo creature. It, 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 just. We need to hide. Is, is that what you're doing? Are you hiding from, from them? I. You know, I honestly, I. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? We can figure out what that means later. Let's get out of the hole and find somewhere to hide. Yes, yes that, 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 that might be a good idea. idea. Yeah, you, you look down and that is a good uh, eight foot hole. Ten foot wide by eight foot deep. And... Your brother kind of stands up and, and looks around. He's like, I kind of didn't think this through. No shit. Um, big, big guy, um, I, I suppose you have a, you, you could give me a boost or anything, could you? Yeah, sure, sure. I'll lift him up and kind of. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Between the two of you, um, you can get Falderall out. However, the big guy in, in, in the grave is a bit more of a challenge. Um, go ahead and give me an athletics check to see if you can climb out. With advantage. I was going to tie my rope to the, to the tree so that he could maybe use it to like help him get out. Okay. okay. Yeah, absolutely. And as you're... Um, you, Make running over to the tree to to tie your your rope around it. Um, what's your passive perception? Uh, uh no, uh, Dee's. Fourteen. So fourteen. Okay. You you begin tying that rope around the trunk and, and tie it off, and then start taking running it back over to the the grave to help the the guy out. And um, as you're doing that, you notice there's rope tied to the branches above you. It it's basically just wound around some of the the heavier branches, and um, one of them seems to be to have been cut, like it's slightly frayed at the tip. The other one, however, not think ahead. about that right now. Go ahead and give me that uh, athletics check with advantage. Um, Crap, sorry, I didn't realize. Apparently mine is automatically rolling advantage because I don't even have the advantage, disadvantage, normal button. Hmm, I'll take a look. But that would be a nat 20 for, well, 19 actually. There you go, now you got your toggles. Alright, thanks. But yeah, with your 19, you can easily climb up um, and, and get out of the grave. As we're all looking around now, there is a building to the north. Um, you don't need, uh, with, with your passive perception um, of 14, DD, you would be able to see that the door seems to be broken out and uh, smashed down on the gr and is on the ground in front of it. Okay, okay, something not great happened here. Is it better to hide in the house or hide in the barn? Uh, 
Um, glancing around at the building, um, I mean, the barn is farther away and smaller. The, the building itself is uh, a story and a half. Like, it, it's, it's, it's enough that you guess there's probably an attic on top of it, but not enough for, like, a full room. Okay, so more places to hide in the house. So let's let's go in the house. Yeah, definitely. We should definitely head in there. Come on, Dee Dee. Um, come on, grave guy. I'll follow along. Yeah. As the three of us make our way into this uh, a seemingly abandoned building, we are going to go ahead and take a break for this evening. So we will be back in about 15 minutes so I can see what the heck's going on with my, with my setup here. And when we return, we're going to find out what happens with uh, the, the Fucklerall twins and their new friend. Stay tuned. You are... And we're back, everybody. Sorry about the delay. I um, think I got everything situated for with my computer here. But uh, we're jumping right back into where we were with um, Falderall and Fiddle Dee Dee have just met a unique individual who was, for some unknown reason, lying at the bottom of what appears to be a grave. That's lovely. Um, the, the trio has now taken shelter inside um, the ramshackle home that they had discovered nearby and are c currently hiding out um, from whatever it is that seemed to have been on their trail. So that's where we pick things up. And now that we're all in here, let's go ahead and do stealth checks because we're hiding. And also, anyone who wants to can do a perception check to either take a look around them to see what's in here in this house, or look outside to see if anyone's coming. Now, there, it, the door is broken. It like there's no door to this building, and actually, you can see at the back there's a back door as well that's broken in, as well as a pair of other doors leading to rooms beyond. Um, there's also a staircase leading up to a loft section, you can see. But that's really, at, at a glance, it. Um, there's also some, uh, at least one window that you can also see out of. So, either take a look in the house, take a look outside, but perception checks and survival checks. Go up. Yes, yeah, stealth check and surv and um, perception check. Wow. Falderall rolled a 8 for stealth and a 12 for perception. So hearing um, hearing his sister say, hey, go up into the loft, you can get a better perspective. He's like, okay, yeah, that's not a bad idea, actually. Um, and he, he, as he's walking by you... Um, mystery man here um he he glances at you up and down and he he says you don't seem to have a weapon you need one He reaches into his pack and produces uh, an object that Dee Dee, you've you've never seen him carry before. It's um, it, it appears to be just a a, a long uh, a long bladed knife with with a, a small handle on it, damn near about the size of a short sword. Um, he passes it over to you and to um, 
the human, and he says, "Here, here. At least uh, you got something to to hold on to." I don't think I have a scabbard or No, uh, well, he, no, it has a scabbard itself. Oh, okay. Well, it, I it's a, it on yeah. It, for, for you, it's probably the size of a, a, a long bowie or a machete. But probably about the same as a short sword. Um, at, then Falderal starts uh, scurrying away, but, y you know, y y the two of you, the two of, the, of us talking... It was much louder than we really should have been. Um, and then as uh, as Falderal starts making his way up, he, he trips and catches himself, but makes a thud. And he is going to make his way out. Uh, Didi, you were... We're going to say that you're the one watching outside the door. And you can see in the moonlight six shapes. One quadrupedal um, on all fours, its head down. Um, the, now that you're, it, you're, it's closer, you can see that it also seems to have a very large horn near the front of its, no, of its head. At least that's the way it looks like from the shadows. Um, definitely big, medium size at least. Um... The way it walks, it's... Well, go ahead and make a... Um, you can make either a nature or a survival. Or if you have another idea to try, uh, of a thing to identify creatures, you can try to sell me on it. Yeah, you have no idea what that creature is. You hear a little rustling up above you and kind of some hay... Um, drifts down in front of your all faces. Now, um, mystery guy, with your 19 perception, you are more looking around this house, and you've n never seen this place before in your life, or at least as far as you can remember. But you can tell that there was definitely a sign of a struggle here. These doors that are broken inward or broken outward obviously smashed in. You can even see some muddy boot prints on them. Um, the kitchen area that you're currently in now is in complete disarray. Food up on the ground that seems rotten and spoiled. Um, you can see that there is a stove over there that's long cold. You can also, from your angle, you can see that there's two bedrooms um, in this area. You can see at least a... a parts of a bed in either room though you'd have to go in there and kind of look around more to see it but you can also see it, the indistinct forms at, of um, the creatures outside or whatever it is there are you can see that bipedal shape moving lumbering forward um, you can see that there are five individuals beyond that as well moving in um, Dee, Dee, I'd say with your nat 20 You'd also be able to see that it appears that there's a, a thin line going from the, the quadrupedal creature to the lead um, humanoid in front, like a leash. Speak up.
Okay. Yeah, you're you're a <laughs> Okay. You I imagine are a bit more closer to the door. Um Dee, Dee you're hiding underneath the table there, so you wouldn't be able to see it as much, but uh uh Grave Guy, you definitely would be able to see that that thing, whatever it is, has gone up to the grave, kind of has it half its body down like as though sniffing around looking in that area um you can also hear faint sounds muffled possibly voices what languages do you speak Yeah, unfortunately, you can't quite make them out. How about you, Dee Dee? Do you what languages do you speak? Just common and gnomish. Okay, so you as well would not know what the hell they're saying. Yeah, now they're just Falderall. but he also rolled shit on his perception, so he I doubt he can even hear it. However, you you would be able to hear him whispering. Didi! Didi! What's the plan? Okay. You hear a bit more rustling. And you would be able to recognize, Dee Dee, the sound of him pulling out his rifle. The creature in the, um, in the grave kind of peeks its head up and starts pulling forward like it, it wants to keep going. And the group continued to make their way as well. Probably about when they get to right there, that's Dee Dee. Um, and Grave Guy, you would be able to see. Like, Dee Dee, you're actually under the table, I think you said. Well, we get there. Um, but you would be able to see the individuals as they get closer. You do have your dark vision, after all. Um, Grave guy, you don't, so you can't really see much more than shapes in the moonlight. But um, you would recognize Dee Dee, um, a creature very lizard like. It at first you think it's a dragon, but then you realize no, there's no wings there. Some type of drake, perhaps. Large, medium sized, it has um, four legs, each tipped with large claws and a big long tail, as well as a horn on the front of its head. Um, it's also much smaller than, than like a, a wormling or something like that. You're, you're, but you're not quite sure what kind of creature it is. Behind them, that thing, however, those individuals you have seen before and, and are familiar with. They're hobgoblins. <coughs> they seem to be... <coughs> sorry. Ah, got something in my throat. Um, they definitely seem to be moving towards the house, fanning out a little bit as, as they approach. Um, the... The lizard-like creature's head is down, obviously sniffing, following your scent. You're waiting for a moment as they get closer and closer until that familiar sound goes off. And he rolled... 
uh, 25. So you would see the lead hobgoblin, the one that was holding the leash, a, just a sp spurt, taking... Yeah, that would be max damage with his uh, rifle that he very wisely imbued with um, with his uh, one of his artificer abilities this morning. He infused it with his what is it called um, the the enchant weapon. So it's actually a plus one weapon right now, and you just watch as this hobgoblin takes a bullet to the head. You you see the mist out behind him and he just drops and so I, now I need everybody to roll initiative when that happens when that happens I kind of look back at him well, he's above you in the loft remember so you oh. look up oh I, can I see him where that you, you can probably see him through like the slats on the ground he's like laying on the ground on the um the loft above he had like his head is half pushed through the thatch, and the rifle is kind of there, so he's like looks like a sniper. Yeah, he's not actually there. That's just I, d I don't have a, a loft part on here. Okay. Yeah. And I thought I put myself there. <sighs> But, you know, for the sake of the map, I'll go ahead and move him. He's more, like, right about there, above you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big boom. I love that movie. She knows it's a multipass. Okay, we got some initiative here set up. We got some music going. Um, we're feeling pretty good, and uh, yeah, Didi, you're up first. Your brother's shot was the was the go. What you doing? Take a swing. Oh yeah, that's definitely gonna hit. Oops. Ooh, that's a shame. You can blow some flurries. I mean, flurry some blows. Flurry of blows. Ooh, nice. That does indeed miss. What's it supposed to be? Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Nine points of bludgeoning damage after taking a spell a uh, stab at it with your short sword you just roundhouse kick this thing and you catch it just right on the side of its head it looks a little dazed from that but 
Definitely still up. Okay, that's it for you. Well, mystery guy in the grave, guess what? It is your turn. What would you like to do? You keep going low. Okay, that thing is big and scary. You can barely see it because, you know, it's nighttime and all. So you're going to be rolling at disadvantage. Uh, be yeah, unfortunately, an 11 is not going to hit. You swing wide at it, but in the darkness, it's really hard to make this guy out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I didn't realize that. Not thinking through quite. Okay. Well, next up we got the Drake here and the Drake as well is going to be, um, well, you know, the guy swinging the big knife really didn't do too much, so it's going to go after the one that did, which is obviously Dee Dee. Why is that? Yeah, that's irritating. Anyway, it rolled a 12, so I assume that doesn't hit. I have to go and change that. That's irritating, but that's okay. Um, it's going to try once more. It's got two attacks. One with a tail, one with a bite. I'm going to set this so it doesn't actually... There we go. That one, I assume, does hit. That's a 21. Okay, so that's going to be seven points of piercing damage. Got it. Okay. That's it for that guy's turn. Next up, we got the Hobgoblin. Hobgoblins do have plenty of dark vision. So they can see you, um, and he's going to come moving up 5, 10, 15, 20, and he's going to take a swing at you, um, mystery guy. I'm going to assume a 22 can hit. Of course it does. For six points of slashing damage. Ouch, indeed. Next, we come to Falderal. Falderal's up there. Um, he kind of gets the sense that, you know, y'all could use a little light. Um, probably a smart move on his part. Um, so, as a bonus action, the first thing he's going to do... Actually, no, he's going to do his action first. That's smarter. Oh, I didn't put the those things in here. Darn it. Should have remembered that.
Okay, yeah. So um, the first thing he's doing is casting Fairy Fire on this group right here. Try to help you all out. So that's going to be a um, dexterity saving throw from all the bad guys. Going to do the Hobgoblins first. Let's see. Yeah, nearly all of them. Can't get all of them, unfortunately. I don't think I can anyway. Yeah, unfortunately, there's literally no way to get all five of them. Damn, that's a shame. Oh well. Dex saving throw from three goblins. Oh, what's my... Ugh. I'm rolling really, really well for the bad guys today. Uh, 14. So yes, one of them does fail. Um... Uh, let's find out. There we go. Okay. That's not bad, at least. So we're going to say it's the two in front. Bright purple lights just start twinkling all around the um, creature in front, which is a guard drake, just for those who are, who are wondering at home, and the hobgoblin in front. So that's good, at least. Let's see here. The next thing he's going to do... Well... Yeah... With his bonus action, he's going to be using his... Um, let's see here... Yes, actually, I need to decide here. Should I use that? Yeah, why not? He is going to... It's kind of stupid, but why not? Yeah, he's going to um, climb up out of the, the roof hole that he had and jump down. going to be an acrobatics check. Actually, it's... Well, it's the same either way. Ah, that's a failure. He falls, lands on his ass. Ah! Fortunately, he's only going to take one point of damage. So that's good, at least. Um, he's going to have to pick himself back up. He had 20 feet left, so now he only has 10 feet. But at least he's on the ground now. Um, yeah, he's going to move up to right about here. And he has... That he ha he's always had that little contraption, you know, Dee Dee. It, it's just a small mechanoid little spider that goes into a little ball and then comes out again and has a lens on it. But he's been improving this thing for as, as long as you can remember. And you see it, him kind of pull it out of his pocket and drop it on the ground and it opens up again into his the little spider form. And then he says, over there! And so, um, I don't actually have a token for this, but we'll use that.
and um, he he's currently going to be using his bonus action to uh, produce a flamethrower through his arcane cannon. That's a spider. And so a burst of flames is going to come shooting out at um, the the two of these guys. Let's see. What is my range here on this? My Eldritch Cannon Flamethrower. 15 foot cone. Yeah, that's a 15-foot cone. So, yeah. Um, he, he's... Unfortunately, he can't hit anyone but these three, but here's the cool thing. The thing on the ground is dead, so that's going to start a fire. Whoosh! You just... You, you both watch as flames come shooting out from this little mechanoid on the ground that's only, like, about this big. But it creates a 15-foot cone of fire that goes spraying out at all three of them. They have to do a, another dexterity saving throw. So that's fun. Uh, this is why I like playing with um, uh, as artificers. They got fun stuff. Fuck, nat twenty for the the Drake. Why am I rolling so good for them? Failure for the Hobgoblin? I don't always. Like, when I roll for myself as a player, half the time it sucks. Yeah, pretty much. Well, the good news is that the Drake still takes half the damage. It's going to be 2d8. Okay, nine points of damage to the Hobgoblin in front. He's looking seriously fucked up. Um, the Drake is only going to take four points, unfortunately. Oh, oh man. Good job, guy. And then he's going to just, uh, let, let, actually that was all of his movement. He can't move anymore. Um, so that's going to be it for Falderall. Next we got some Hobgoblins, three of them, who kind of are taking a little bit of back because, you know, Bernie thing shooting flames and weird weird uh, strikes of thunder that um, just takes a guy out. So I think he's going to go ahead and pull out his longbow and take a shot at Falderall. Oof. 19's going to hit. Two points of piercing damage. Not bad. Um, seeing that, the next guy is going to do the exact same thing. He's going to move into a little bit better position. There next to his buddy. Actually, yeah, okay. 17 just hits. Another two points of damage. 
ouch, two, two longbow shots right in the chest. Last Hobgoblin's turn. Um, he's going to take a shot at you, Dee Dee. That's a 17 to hit. 17 misses. Whew. Uh, good thing that did because that would not have been great for you. Okay, well, guess what? We are at the top of the turn order again. So, Dee Dee, what do you want to do? Nice, that 20. points of damage. He's definitely looking hurt, taking a little bit of fire and a few piercings. Both hit. You're definitely wear wearing this thing down. You pummeling it over and over again, first with your sword, then with your fist. It's looking hurt, but it's still up. Oh, yes! Actually, they should have all been at advantage. Yes, the Drake failed. You're right. Thank you. Thank you there. So, go ahead and roll those again, just to see if you got any crit. There you go. Uh, we'll just take that extra four points of damage on the back end. Yeah, de he's definitely looking roughed up at this point. I assume you're going to stay where you are? Okay. Guy in the grave, you're up next. Right, so, did you say this guy is on fire now? This thing is on fire now, so let me give you a bit of light. Also, you can see the dude right there in front of you because he has, you, you know, all of the little lights flickering around him. Yeah, on that guy you have advantage. On both that and the drake. Twenty-two definitely hits. That's four damage. Four damage. You take your that Bowie that you were given and just stab upward, right through the thing's neck. It gurgles and sputters <laughs> and falls to the ground dead. Good job. Next up, we got the guard Drake that is severely hurt and kind of thrashing about wildly. Oof, that's a 24 to hit you, Dee Dee. Seven points of piercing damage. Second one is a 12, which I assume misses. So how are you looking right now, Dee Dee? Well, that's good at least. Still in the double digits. Well, next up, it is your brother's turn. Um, He's uh, he's he's looking over at you, and he has his gu gun still, but uh, he, he he looks concerned. Dee Dee, you okay? He's uh, yeah, he's gonna go ahead and back up just a little bit so he has better. 
a, a better range of attack. He's going to go level that rifle of his. It looks comically big in his hand. Like, uh, re remember in um, Star Wars A New Hope, the rifle that Luke had at the very beginning? It was just super, super long and kind of silly looking. It's kind of like that. Alakablam for a 24. And, wow, that's actually really funny because 12 points of damage is exactly how much the damn thing has. Look at that on the map right there. 12. Ha, ha, ha. So with the shot, uh, it just takes the thing out in the chest and it goes flying back about five feet just landing in the dirt it is definitely dead falder all kind of grins at that and i need to figure out how much movement his little spider thingy has Okay, as part of the same bonus action, you can direct the cannon to walk or climb up to 15 feet to an unoccupied space, provided it has legs. Which I did give it legs. So it's going to move five. Um, yeah, there's no way I can get all three of them. That's unfortunate. Oh, well, it's going to move to right here. This little spider thing... Turns, aims directly at those two hobgoblins, and lets a cone rip. I feel like I don't really need the fire thing, but it's fun to have anyway. Anyway, it's not the right size, but it doesn't matter. Whoosh! So I need um, dexterity saving throws from the both of them. That's an 11 and a 7. Both fail. There is Felderall's damage. It's 2d8. Oh, that's not... 8 points of fire damage. It's not an attack roll. I don't know why it's set to do an attack roll. Anyway. Both hobgoblins burst into flames. They scream out in pain. Ah! Can't really understand them because they're in goblin, but uh, they're speaking in goblin, but you, you, you definitely know that hurt. We got Anesthetic in chat, in chat right now giving us bits, saying, Love ya! Love you too, Anesthetic. Love to see you here. Okay. Well, guess whose turn it is? Those two hobgoblins who are on fire. So, you, you know, if you're a hobgoblin... And you were just a dude tracking a, a scent that, that you found. You know, you're a bandit. You think maybe maybe someone camped out on the road, easy pickings. And then you just watch three of them get dropped in the matter of a few seconds. And then you're both on fire. What would you do in that circumstance? I know what I would do. Cut and run. Yeah. And so I'm going to say that's probably what they're doing. The two of them together, on fire, are running away, screaming, trying to put out the flames. Like, the flamethrower, the, the text doesn't really say that it makes them on fire. It's just fire damage. But I like the flavor of the fact that their clothes are probably burning. Their hair is definitely charred. And they're not feeling great. So they're running the fuck away. Definitely. We got one left, and, uh, yeah, you know, 
Your your friends all run. Half of them are dead. He's going to snarl in anger and at least take a shot with his bow at before running. So he's going to aim at Falderal. Because obviously Falderal is the one with the thing. Yeah. Well, it was an 8 anyway, so it wouldn't have hit. Um, it's going to take off running. This only gets 30 feet, though. Those other two guys, they got 60 feet, so they're probably off the map. Put them right down on the edge. They could, got to run 60 feet. He can only do 30, so that's 5, 5 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Hey, Didi, it's your turn. Um, you can see these three are running. Um, you, you still have eyes on at least one of them. That's fair. Fuck that guy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> 11 points of damage. <laughs> Guess what? How many hit points a hobgoblin has? Just as a base stat. 11. <laughs> so as... He's running away. Tell us how this looks. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah, he just skids in the dirt. Now that's it for that guy. Um, now, mystery guy, you can't really attack anybody at this point. Um, you only get... You, well, I mean, he doesn't have a ranged weapon, and I don't think he can run that fast. So... I don't know. What what do you want to do? Yeah, no, I can't get to any of the guys that were first that I'm not gonna that. And that's okay. Uh Falderall comes walking up next to you and he says, Hey uh, you see how they're kinda on fire and we can see him just a little bit in the distance? It might be enough. Let's find out. And he kind of gives him a grin as he um, holds, holds up that the rifle and shoulders it. Now I'm trying to see how much range it actually is. Hundred feet? Yeah, they, they would have only been able to run 60, so he can still barely see it. So I'm going to still call it disadvantage anyway because it's like a slightly smoldering target. Yeah, I mean, the, the ability doesn't actually catch them on fire. I've just been, fl been flavoring it. So it's like, they're still a little bit lit. So I can still see them. It's just going to be a, a, a much harder shot. 
but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, with a 19, he absolutely is going to hit. And six points of damage is more than enough to take that guy out. He only had three. So as this guy's running and running, Falderall just... Hey. You ever seen one of these before? And you just watch as the light winks out. It is, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, he, he kind of uh, puts the, the rifle on his shoulder and walks over to check out his sister, who ain't looking great. <laughs> You're kicking the hobgoblin? That's fair. Well, he's going to walk over and, and look you up and down and... I don't suppose you got any healing potions, do you? Well, I did actually. And he pr <laughs> he reaches into his ba bag. Um, he he has a, a bag of holding, um, and kind of rummages through it a little bit. And he produces one and and hands it to you, and then thinks about it and gives you a second one. I only I was able to grab three, but I figure you should probably use these. Um, you know what? Why don't I heal you first too? That way we can save it. So he's gonna cast uh, Cure Light Wounds on you, his last spell of the day. So that's six healing from that. I don't know how good hobgoblins taste, but uh, that guy's on fire over there. <laughs> Pretty nasty. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, what is that thing, anyway? Yeah, Falderall's going to come over and kind of poke at it a little <laughs> bit and start checking it out. Um... Hey, uh, big guy, you did okay ab over there. You pretty savage fighter. Think you can uh, help us out and check th check those other guys? Yeah, that is going to be an investigation check. I don't know why. Oh, I forgot to take off disadvantage. Um, F Didi, if you want to do an investigation as well, you can help out and kind of check out all these these hobgoblins and whatnot. Okay. Um, yeah, that's probably survival or medicine. Falderall got down and started checking the thing out because he's kind of curious about it. And a after a little bit of time, he, he reports, um, yeah, I think this is a guard drake. I read about one them once. They're, 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 they're lizard kin, um, not the same species as dragons, kind kind of like a, a side species. They're 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 bred to you, you know hunt and they're bred bred to track and that sort of thing. Ugh. Um, with a six, yeah, not not so great. Um, you do take your uh, your quarter staff and smash off the horn on top of the thing. 
you can at least get that off of it. Um, with an elect, with your um, twenty-one investigation grave guy, um, the hobgoblins. Each one is wearing a chain chainmail, um, and has a shield. He also has a long sword and a long bow and ten arrows. In total, we're able to gather up. Uh, 106 gold pieces and 9 silver pieces. Wow. You also find um, that there's um, a letter one of them is carrying. The the one that um, that Falderall shot at a distance. No, not the one that's on fire. He, he was slightly on fire, but then Falderall shot him. The, the one that was running away. Yeah, that guy over there. Yeah. And um, he, ha he has a note on him. Um, it, it seems to detail that there are part... That, um, their orders were to secure this uh, this area and set up a, a base camp. Plans seem to in include um, hitting travelers and that sort of thing. You you, you get the, se the the sense from reading it that they're a mercenary company, probably heading more into banditry at this point, because the, um, the orders specifically say watching the road, stopping people as they, they pass, that sort of thing. You also um, get a name. The name is um, the name are is the Red Tusks. The Red Tusk Mercenary Group. Which is weird for hobgoblins, but who knows? This time takes about 20, 25 minutes, maybe 30 at most. But uh, what do you all want to do? I don't disagree with either of you. I don't know. What do you think about this place here? You think those hobgoblins might come back? Okay, well... Why not? Let's uh, check this place out, see if we can secure it at least a little bit. I don't know. Let's go look inside. So Falderall is going to lead the way back into the, the house. Yeah, there is some furniture in this place that hasn't been smashed up. There's a table, there's um, a, a bench and a chair. As you start walking around uh, um, looking, there are other rooms as well. Falderall begins checking out these rooms. Um, he reports that there's a, a small bed and a, a small chest and uh, what looks like a dresser and a, a bench in this room as well. In the other room, there's a much larger bed, probably for size for two people. Uh, a couple, uh, a couple uh, dressers as well, uh, a bookshelf, and a, a big old desk. Since he's already in here, I'll go ahead and let him do the investigation check. But while he's investigating that, what are the other two of you doing? Thank you. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. You can light a torch if you want to. If you're not worried about the light or anything like that. Well, I mean, there is a guy outside on fire. That is true too. Do you just leave him on fire? I mean, I feel like it serves as a warning to anything else that comes up. Fair enough. Well, now you do have a light source going on, so there's that. Okay. Go ahead and make your investigation check. Uh, Dee Dee, what are you up to? Can't hear you. Yep. Um, actually, yeah, I would say so. Like, um, both of you are, both of us are under four feet tall. Like, I, I think Falderall's like three foot three or something like that. A uh, three six, my mistake. Yeah. Okay. While you're in there, go ahead and make a perception check or investigation check. With your 12, you can tell that this room, well, no, first of all, extremely dusty. Like, um, just from a general look, it it's probably hasn't been lived in in quite some time. You can see that um, the chest that, that's in there is, is a toy chest. There's a few very moldy and moth-eaten um, stuffed toys in, in there. Um in the dresser, you see scraps of clothing and, and things like that. Probably a child's clothing. But yeah, you can definitely, both of you can easily fit on that bed. Your brother comes back in and reports that, Hey, um, yeah, didn't find anything on the desk. Uh, there did find an interesting book on farming on the bookshelf, and there's a few things uh, um, of history that are at, at, at least at least 50 years out of date. I don't know. Um, so with your uh, 11 grave guy, um, not a lot is left over in this room. Um, as I said, uh, what food was on the ground has long since spoiled or, or rotten or just been eaten away. There's just bits and scraps and, and things like that. But with in your search, one thing you do find under the stairs, there is a small crate. Just just a very small one, tucked up under some like uh, moldy leather and things like that. Um, you pull it out and you open it up. And you find uh, three bottles of wine. With the cork still in it and, and everything. Falder, I'll come, come over and check it out and re reach up and take one. And he, he examines it. Uh, no. This isn't. This is some nice stuff. This is uh, some dwarvish wine. They, they mo mostly make ales, but their wines aren't bad. This here's a uh, um, a Pinot Noir. Mmm, it's it's pretty good vino. You want some DD before you go to bed? You see um, Falderall reach into his bag and kind of scrape around a little bit and pull out a very odd contraption. Like it's just a couple boxes of, of wood on either side and some gears and lovers and then just this crank thing. He um, 
he sits the bottle down on the table and kind of climbs up onto the the bench and stands on it to do this and he, he adjusts a few things here and there then you hear a as the cork pops out <laughs> pretty cool huh bottle opener invented this myself He'll pull out uh, a few glasses, uh, a few silver goblets from his uh, bag, and uh, Dee Dee, you recognize those as well. What? I mean, not not a lot. Just a, f a few things in in the um, that office where we fought that uh, genie thingy. There's a few stuff, some stuff in the drawers and, and and all that. And I mean, no one was gonna need it. I mean, think about it, Didi. The the place was an illegal uh, research facility. Who's gonna complain? Oh, I don't know. I thought I could use them to make something at some point. Good silver is hard to come by. <laughs> he kind of grins and starts pouring for the three of us and passes one to to each of you. And like Didi said, light and fruity and a little dry. I mean, there, there's definitely some tannins going on in there. He probably should have decanted it, but he doesn't know any better. It's booze. So as he hands it, it up to you... Um, their grave guy, he says, so, uh, what should we call you? Oh, I don't know. The noggin's pretty useful, I mean. And he, he kind of taps the, the rifle <laughs> that he has next to him. No, oh, you like it, do you? Yeah, um, I invented this myself. It's, um, well, you, you see, and he starts to explain in way too much detail exactly how the thing... <laughs> I mean, that's a gross oversimplification, but yeah, that's basically right. Stop it! Well, I'm, I'm Falderall. This is my, my sister, Fiddle Dee Dee. Um, we're traveling t toward uh, Coltrast, actually. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if I hit you on the head and made you lose your memory. That's... Did, did I do that? This is definitely very true. Like, I'm, something tells me that there was definitely, definitely something that happened. Something that happened. Just look like his memory. Yeah. Make make a uh, perception check. Or a medicine check, I suppose either would be fine. Yeah. 
11. Okay. Um, looking him up and down, like, th there's a firelight from the torch, so there is some light in here. Y you're examining his neck as, as closely as you can. Um, um, good news is there's no, like, bite marks or anything like that, but as far as, like, a, a, a rope or anything... Okay, you're looking for the... Is there a little bit of purplish there on the neck maybe but then again at the same time you like you you look again and, and then it's gone like maybe it was just a trick of the light so you're not quite sure Yeah, I'm a. I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat as Dee Dee here. Um, there's no way of knowing if you're from here or if you just happened along and ended up in a hole. Or maybe we can look around again in the morning when there's more light. But I, I've we've checked out this house and I haven't seen anything that that um, even has, like, a name or anything on it. Um, Lohim! I mean, you never know. He's a popular guy. It's possible... Maybe he was raised by gnomes, and they gave him a, a name, and uh, he, he went through his entire life being, being having a gnomish name. It doesn't sound familiar. Oh, you you would you would remember him if you if you met him. He's he he's a uh, he's eccentric, and that's coming from me. I, I don't know. And uh, Faldral's going to take another long draw on his wine. I don't know. I mean, you can find good vino. I don't know. Um, seeker? Finder? I don't know. Well, just drink your vino and... Well, I mean, you, you, you like the vino, you, you, you fight like a savage man. Huh? Yeah, Veed the Savage. How about Veed Savage? I think I'm going to go by Veed Savage for, for now. So maybe, maybe hopefully one day I'll find out who I actually am. Huh? And, then, and I'm going to kind of pat around my pocket. Reach in a pot of, open it up, and... 
Yep. Falder, I'll take out the the locket and kind of give it a once over. He uh, kind of looks at it a little bit and he says, "Yeah, um, fortunately the details are pretty dang incons indistinct. I can't even you know make out if it's." A person or, or or what? There's just kind of a bit of an outline here. Um, no, I've haven't seen really anything like this. And he kind of looks over, looks it over a little bit more. Well, this is silver, pure silver, kind of like the the goblet you got there. Um. Um, make a perception check. Eleven. Uh, the paper is very rough, like, as you touch it, and you, you move your finger along it, and it, like, starts to crack a little bit, and you, like, stop, stop. You're like, nope, nope, not going to touch it. Yeah, Falder, I'll hand um, the locket back to you and say, Sorry, I wish I could be more help. Um, y you know, per we're a part of a, an, an organization. Well, we're, we're loosely part, a part of the organization. And he, he holds up his hand, and you can see that there's this tattoo on his hand. It's a, it, it's a book with... Um, some uh, olive leaves kind of circling around it, a, a quill and a wand and, and, and a few other little little tidbits and scroll work and things like that. And he says, Let's see, um, we're members of an organization called the Erudite Conclave. We're, we're, we're kind of lore masters and uh, hi historians and, and that sort of thing. Now, the, the closest... Uh, Conclave uh, outpost would probably be, well, God, from where we are right now. Ugh. Morag or North Amia or Ravancia, yeah, all of them are pretty damn far away. But if you ever, if you want to travel with us for a bit, we're heading to Coltrast, and eventually we'll be, you know, um, possibly making our, their, our way beyond. The, the Conclave might be able to actually give you some information on this. Oh, from where we are right now, yeah, it's, it's pretty damn far. So there are no, like, real good Conclave um, outposts near where we are right now. Anybody? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, if anybody can help me get to the bottom of the screen, maybe someone there to say they know a lot about history. That's what I'm looking for, my, my history. Well, at the very least, we can give you a letter of introduction. Um, make things easier for you. The, we, the, the bureaucracy in the Conclave is kind of, you know, complicated and over the top and a little difficult, but if you, if you want to join the Conclave and you, you have a letter of introduction, they'll probably help you out. Yeah, I think they will. I'm going to look at the locket one more time. I, just, I can't shake the feeling that that they be, that you ever was in these pictures. They're important. I really want to figure out who these people are. Well, if anyone can help you, a conclave researcher can. Well, 
you two uh, better get some shut eye. I'm I'm feeling kind of okay. I'll I'll go ahead and stay up first. Keep a watch out. Besides, if anyone comes anywhere near the house, I'll just shoot. That'll be enough to wake you up. There is a um, a small stool that's in front of the the desk. You could grab that if you wanted to. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna actually pull it over here by the door. I'm just gonna sit, sit down, back to the wall, and I'm gonna take my hat, kind of cover my eyes, sit there. Okay. Well, as you all lay down for your rests, um, Falderall heads up and actually takes his spot once again in his little crow nest that he made up in the loft. Good news is, nothing else shows up. The hobgoblins clearly were scared enough away that they don't make it back. Falderall wakes up uh, Fiddle Dee Dee next for her watch after letting her get some good sleep. Our new friend Veed obviously takes the last. We all wake up bright and early. Veed, um, during your watch, do you do anything here in the house? You know, I'm going to just kind of Looking around, just, you know, I know I did earlier, but I'm going to kind of look more in depth in this room. Go through some drawers and stuff. Kind of. Along with that, make my way around, maybe for nothing. You know, okay. Maybe, maybe search that grave I was in to see if there's anything in this room. If I have time. Um, you probably need to make a, a pretty good thorough search of, of the place, and it would be dark, so you better be bet would be to search the grave in the morning. But go ahead and make an investigation check at advantage, since you got plenty of time. That would be a 19. With your 19, you do a very thorough search of the house, looking for anything that you can find. You do find um, a few things here in, in the house. Um, you do find a, a set of common clothes, a backpack, a bedroll, a mess kit, a tinder box, some torches, and a, a water skin that's still serviceable, and, and a rope, the things that you would normally have um, as an explorer. Um, you also find in the, the barn over there um, a whip that you arm yourself with as well. Other than that, not a lot of things stand out here in this house. You, you do see some, some children's toys, things of that nature. Um, there are a couple books that Falderall just had no interest in, which is mostly history on the Margarden Federation and um, some books on ancient history. Like, uh, well, you'd consider it ancient history, but within the last five, six hundred years, not a lot interesting, to be honest. You feel you end up feeling a, a little bit disappointed, but at least you have some gear to take with you now. The next morning when you wake up, um, Falderall's digging through, or, well, everyone wakes up and you're all getting ready. Falderall digs through his bag once again and produces a set of leather armor that he gives you. Definitely. Just don't tell my sister where you got it. And puts his bag back on his hip and just goes walking off. Dee Dee, come on, it's time to get up. We need, we need to get out of here. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably. 
you all munch on um, some early morning rations as, as you all leave. Um, the hobgoblins over there, yeah, roasted. The others are dead. Um, you do take some time to look in that grave, but unfortunately, nothing else is down there except for two gold coins that you find in the dirt. Um, that's a good question. Let's uh, do a history check and find out. Um, this this far north away from the desert, yeah, burial is fairly typical. Um, that two coins thing, I, I've, I've actually heard about something like that. They say that uh, when you, when you, you that down here, when, when somebody murders somebody, they tend to leave a couple gold coins on their eyes. Um, uh, Mo the, leaving money to pay the, the toll across the river sticks. The murdered. The murderer le leaves that for the murdered as a way to appease the soul. Hope, the, hope that they don't come back to haunt them, you know? That's what I've read anyway. I mean, honestly, it's kind of kind of hooey. But you don't need gold to cross the river what well, you from what I've read you need a lot worse and most people just get end up th their spirits just end up getting thrown into it so but you know superstition people are weird I just kind of look at this point kind of question my mind I don't know. You uh, piss anybody off enough that they want to kill you? Well, I mean, don't remember past that. Uh, well, I know what I remember. I remember since I met you. Perhaps. Well, you got plenty of time to talk about it. The road is long. Well. Let's get going before those hobgoblins decide to head back this way. There are still ropes in the tree. In fact, yes, one of them does. There are two. There are two ropes um, hanging from the tree. One, the one towards the back, definitely has a noose hanging on it. It um. At first, you didn't notice it because it was just like the the loop was cut, and so it was just two sides dangling there. But it, like looking at it and thinking to yourself, "Yeah, definitely, definitely, that's a noose." The second one, the the one that you saw previously, is just you know wound around the branch, and then just a frayed rope hanging there. But you can also see that's clearly there are three places, two mounds that appear to have been. Buried once again, and a third one that's left open. That's where we found Veed. Does looking at this tree and these ropes, does, it, does that bring back anything to me? Make a make an intelligence check. <laughs> wow, that is a nat 20 for 20. Of all the skill checks to get a nat 20 on, it's the one I got. Okay. 
you get this... The best way to describe it is a series of flashes. Flash one moment on a horse. Flash another moment. Riding, you can see hills. Flash again. Your eyes rolling up in your skull. You feel pain. You feel this intense choking sensation. Flash again. Voices. Indistinct. More of silhouettes against the sun. Flash again. The smell of earth. Flash again. Pain. Two voices. Indistinct. Calling out. High pitch. Lower pitch. But then it's gone. And you just sit there staring up at that frayed rope that just kind of dangling back and forth a little bit in, in the breeze. And a full body shiver goes up your spine. And at that, I instinctively grab. You stand there for a moment, watch, looking at it, but then you just can't help but turn away because nothing more is forthcoming. I feel like... That's my purpose. That's where I'm going. I'm, that's what I need to find out. What were those other voices? And as you turn and walk away, there's this one last flash that come, kind of comes across your mind. Your hands with a small knife, whittling, carving a, a block of wood. Slowly, just piece, piece, shaping. You have an idea in your mind. Not sure what, it, what form it's going to take. But there's an impulse there. You see that Falderall has kind of walked a little ahead and then glanced back, realizing that the two of you are still standing at, staring at that tree, and he yells, Come on, you two, we got to get going. I kind of shake my head a little bit, kind of, you know, shake myself out of that. Visions and all that. Tear my head a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. We did. We did. And as you're all walking away from the house, all your minds kind of lingering on on this mystery that you've seen. You, you hear Falderall call out, "You know, big guy. You want to give one of these a try?" And he kind of holds up the rifle. He has a big O grin on his face. And then behind the two of you, you just see the camera kind of pans to Dee Dee, her hand in her face, shaking it, shaking her head. And that's where. Go ahead. I kind of get a little bit of a smile on my face. Yeah, you know, I think I would like to try that out. And that is where we're going to leave things for this evening. With Falderall, Fiddle Dee Dee, and a brand new friend making their way on a slow trek towards Coltrast. So, 
thank you to everyone who watched this evening. We really appreciate you hanging out and uh, enjoying this 100% improv um, adventure. Other than the maps I prepared, it was just all random rolls and, and goofing around. So uh, I hope you had fun. I hope you two had fun. Yeah, this was my first attempt at this. What do you mean? Oh, um, it. I'll read exactly what it says. Because that was it. That was literally it. Yeah, the forest just decided it didn't want to be a forest anymore and started falling. Yeah, let me find that again. Uh, 71. As the party ventures through a patch of woods, all seems well. Perception checks. Notice the ground's moving. Suddenly there's a cracking of wood and a roaring, blah, 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 and trees just start falling on you. Each party member must make a, a DC 14 dexterity saving throw three times before leaving the woods. If the character fails, they take 3d6 bludgeoning damage from the falling trees. As the, the leaves settle, the party come to realize that not only did all all of the trees fall inward to a central point rather than the same direction, but they have not heard a single bird or animal for some time. It was just a random encounter. I know, right? Who the hell knows? But I have all these different random tab tables of different encounters, and I just have you roll one. I choose one of the folders at random, and whatever came up, that's what we dealt with. I don't know. What do you think? I, I kind of like this this format of just goofing off and making random rolls and having to deal with whatever you're dealing with. You like that? How you, what do you think, Brandy? Yeah, that's fun. Okay, cool. Well, I'm I'm gonna keep doing more of these every so often, just random one improv one shots because I think they're a blast. Well, once again, thank you to everyone who watched this evening. Have a great evening. We'll see you next time whenever we decide to do one of these. Good night. Yeah. Until next time, may you live until you die.